Uh, one key aspect of Parkinson's, and I really don't want to call it a disease. <clears throat> In the UK we call people with Parkinson's, for instance. It's not a disease. We have written, and many others, that it's a syndrome. Uh, and that is because it's not just dopamine. We have involvement of acetylcholine, noradrenaline, and serotonin, amongst many others, glutamate and other neurochemicals. And what happens that we also know from pathology studies that in many patients these neuronal cells might die preferentially more sometimes in various stages of Parkinson's than the dopaminergic cells. As a result, what we've now found that many patients with Parkinson's present in slightly atypical way. Some would have early cognitive problem, we call it mild cognitive impairment. Some would have early problems with sleep attacks. These patients should not be driving, for instance. They should not be given the drugs primipexol and rapinarol because they, it's a serotonergic mechanism in the brain that's affected. And some, and we've very recently published this paper in Nature Reviews Neurology, about the noradrenaline system that can be affected. Noradrenaline is very closely linked to our autonomic function and pain. So these patients often express a lot of pain, have autonomic dysfunction. So you can see how the different neurotransmitter deficits can lead to differential expression of symptoms. We call them the non-murder subtypes. Time is also coming when, the, with the aid of sophisticated imaging, you can pick out these deficits. You can do noradrenergic imaging, you can do serotonergic imaging, you can do cholinergic imaging. However, they're not widespread. The challenge is to make it so that everybody globally can do this in the clinical setting and that's what stepped care is aiming to do.